Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznuz here, and today's video is going to be a video talking about the best gear upgrades that will help you boost your DPS and help you figure out just what upgrades are good to progress in PVM. Now, a lot of people really struggle knowing what items to upgrade and really the true order that you should upgrade things. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your money. I'm going to try to give you some items to buy to increase your DPS and really help you figure out what items are right for you so you can take the next step in your PVM journey. I'll also be giving you some items that you should stay away from and things that are kind of overrated. So without further ado, let us get right into the first upgrade. So the first upgrade we're going to be talking about is actually an amulet, and the amulet is the Essence of Finality. Now the Essence of Finality is a degradable amulet that is made by combining an alchemical hydrix with an amulet of souls and a reaper necklace. This necklace provides a plus 56 damage bonus in all styles, making it a hybrid best in slot amulet. Now the amulet at the moment is going for around 280 mil GP, which makes it cost a decent chunk of change. However, this is an upgrade that will benefit you no matter what style you use, and it will be the best in slot and is a huge upgrade for taking the next step into higher level PVM. The other amazing thing about this amulet is that you can store a special attack in it, and you can use your special attack no matter what weapon you are using. For instance, you can store the Guthic Staff for magic, or the Dark Bow for range, or Dragon Claws for melee. These are all of the super budget options, and they only cost a few hundred K. And the nice thing is with these super budget options, you can swap them out whenever you'd like, and you'll only lose a few hundred K. Now this is personally what I do. So when I'm doing a bunch of, bunch of bosses with range, I'll have my Debo in my Essence of Finality. And then if I want to use Mage for something, instead of having to buy a whole new Essence of Finality, I'll just throw a Guthic Staff in there and just buy back my Debo later. Yeah, I'll lose a few hundred K, but to me, it's more worth it than buying a whole new Essence of Finality. Finality. Now as stated previously, the best budget special attacks to use are the Guthic Staff for Mage, the Dark Bow for Ranged, and the Dragon Claws for Melee. I use the Debo spec all the time in my DPS rotation, and it really increases my DPS output a ton. It's the same with magic, I'll spam the Guthic staff at places like Telos P5 and at the start of different boss fights. The amazing thing about the Essence of Finality is before you would have to switch the, your Guthic staff and spec and you basically get tier 60 damage and accuracy from the Guthic staff, but now you can Guthic staff special attack with say your tier 90 noxious staff and it will deal the damage of a tier 90 weapon, which is just absolutely amazing. Not to mention that you also get the effects of the Reaper Amulet and Amulet of Souls in one amulet. And you also get the best in slot style bonuses, so the EOF is just a no-brainer for beginners that are looking to transition to higher level PVM like Rax, Nex, and Telos. And it is honestly such a good upgrade if you have the funds available. Alright, so the next thing we're going to look at are the tier 80 boots for each style. Now this is the fleeting boots and the blast diffusion boots specifically. We're not going to be talking about the laceration boots because they're just not as good as these boots. So the blast diffusion boots and fleeting boots are no brainers if you mage or range and are super good for the price. So first off, fleeting boots are tier 80 ranged power boots and they have a special effect that will provide you the ability to move while using the rapid fire ability. They'll also give you a 10% increased hit chance while the ability is active. So this is absolutely amazing as your rapid fire will never get interrupted and it allows for a ton of extra movement and versatility while still outputting a ton of DPS when ranging. The great thing about these boots is they're only 40 million GP, and if you want, for an extra 100 million GP, you can buy a Shadow Spike, which is used to upgrade these boots further to tier 90 boots with the same effect. If you don't have these and you use range, I would highly recommend stop what you're doing and making these one of the first upgrades you buy. Now that I've used the fleeting boots, I can honestly never go back to range DPSing without them. 
All right, so secondly, we are going to look at the tier 80 magic boots, the blast diffusion boots. Now these are also tier 80 magic power boots, just like the fleeting boots, and they have a special effect that shortens the charge time on the detonate magic threshold. Now this means that detonate will fully charge 33.3% faster than normal. This allows for an ability like Detonate to be used as a really good threshold in magic rotations just like Asphyxiate and Wild Magic. So if you are maging, these boots are a must have to increase your DPS. And the best part? They only cost 4.8 million GP. That's cheaper than Virtus boots, which these offer the same style bonus as. With the increased Detonate charge rate as well, these are just a no brainer. If you're maging at all, whether you have tier 70 weapons or tier 92 weapons, Blast Diffusion Boots are a must get upgrade and I would personally just buy them right away. All right, so now we're gonna move on to a common mistake I see people doing is upgrading from their tier 90 or even their tier 80 armor to the best of the best tier 92 power armor. Now at first, this may seem like a no brainer, the rush to get to tier 92 Elite Serenic or Tectonic as this is the best possible armor you can get in terms of DPS. And that allure of having the absolutely best in slot armor can be strong. But don't be fooled, while tier 92 armor is really really good and of course it is the best in slot armor, it is not that huge of a difference or upgrade versus tier 90 armor and it's actually really marginal. So the actual DPS increase of tier 90 armor, such as tectonic, to tier 92 armor is only a 0.8 DPS increase, which is way lower than you may have expected. Considering the fact that for ranged it's going to cost you almost 800 million GP to upgrade to elite serenic, and from uh, Mage, it will cost you over 300 mil to upgrade to Elite Tectonic. So upgrading to tier 92 armor is usually one of the last upgrades you'll want to get, and you'll only want to get it once you have almost every other core upgrade and you're just trying to maximize as much as possible. So I know guys that it can be tempting to be like, oh, you know, I have Pernix or I have, you know, um, Serenic, and I really just want to go and spend all the money and upgrade to the best in slot armor, but realize that the difference that this is going to make in your DPS is going to be very marginal. That's why I recommend it being one of the last upgrades you get when you just have so much cash to throw around and you just want to get the little bit of extra damage. But uh, you can get a lot more notable upgrades for your DPS than upgrading to tier 92 armor. Alright, so moving on, we are going to be talking about our final upgrade, which is an upgrade that works for all styles, which is the Onslaught Ultimate ability. Now, the Onslaught ability is unlocked by using a Mascab ability codex, and at the time of recording, it costs around 48 million GP. Now, Onslaught is an ultimate ability that is a channeled ability. So Onslaught starts out by dealing 49.5 to 150% ability damage and increases by 11 to 33% for each hit. The player will pay 25% adrenaline per hit, and then after this, you'll start taking damage every hit. So Onslaught is an amazing ability and it's super versatile and it's really good for beginner PVMers. It's kind of like a press this button and DPS ability. It's most notable at places like Telos on phase 3 and at phase 5. It's really good at a Raxor on the last phase for bursting out damage while you're focusing on switching prayers. It's really good at next at the blood phase if that's something you struggle with. If you struggle with dealing enough damage on Nex's blood phase, then Onslaught is a really great option for there as well. Honestly, for the price, Onslaught is just such a good and versatile ability, and while it might not be used everywhere, it can be really, really good when learning bosses like Telos, Araxor, Nex, and is even good at Virago. And it's a nice way to easily DPS super hard during DPS checks and is really simple to use. 
If you don't have Onslaught, you should definitely unlock it and go give it a try. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure to smash the like button. It really helps the video get out there. So I would really appreciate it if you guys would do that and make sure to subscribe. Uh, I will be doing a giveaway for 10K subscribers. So let's see how fast we can get there. So make sure to hit that subscribe button for tons more videos. And yeah, I have more DPS uh, upgrade guides and stuff like that that I'll link in the description in case you're interested in seeing more of these. But I hope this helps you guys out. I, you know, really like making this, these videos because it seems to help a lot of people out, you know, that are new. There's so much stuff in the game. There's so many upgrades. There's so many abilities. It's really hard for people that aren't, you know, uh, been playing for, you know, since the start of EOC that are engrossed in the game. Uh, maybe you're just starting out. Maybe you've been playing for a year. It's really hard to know about everything. So I try to make these videos to kind of, you know, give you some ideas on what to upgrade, what to wait out on, and uh, what's good and what's not. So yeah, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.